Hey you going guys, Dean from Blog for the Blood God here and I wanted to hit you guys with a quick live stream to show you what I'm working on at the moment because it's pretty exciting and I'm really keen to show you guys this next exciting content. So uh, I'm going to flip the camera and I'll show you what I'm working on. Alright, so in front of me you'll see a 6 foot by 8 foot 40k table setup. You'll also notice there's some backdrop set up and some ghetto lighting uh, kits set up. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're filming the probably one of the biggest 40k battle reports I've ever filmed. So it's going to be around 15,000 to 20,000 points per side. I'm going to be getting out all of this corn. All of the corn is coming out. Some of these um, bone coloured Chaos Space Marines are coming out. I'm leaving the Zinch, I'm leaving the Nurgle, and I'm leaving the Slanesh out. So we're going to have all of this corn going toe to toe with these bone coloured Marines. As well as I've got uh, Sam Jutney is giving me his bone coloured Marines, which are painted in the exact same style as this. because They were all commissioned painted by me as one big batch. So yeah, there's going to be probably twice as many Marines as this plus a Sisters of Battle army that's about the same size, plus a Grey Knight's army. And basically we're going to be doing a narrative style apocalypse battle report where the narrative is, is that this Space Marine chapter known as the Bone Jackals was sent to a planet to eliminate some Chaos Cults. They did their best, they killed everything they could, and then they were like, yep, job done, and half of them fucked off. But due to the proximity to the Cicatrix Maledictum, half of them decided to stay to ensure that the planet didn't immediately just fall back to chaos. So half of the Marines stayed, the other half left. And then years later, they lost contact with the Marines that stayed, so they decided to go back. And it turns out that those Marines that stayed behind have fallen to chaos and have become these Chaos Space Marines. So there was a bit of a uh, corruption happening on this planet, in this city. The Chaos Cults ended up turning the Space Marines to the forces of Chaos. As a result, the Adeptus Sororitas heard of this heresy and decided that they were going to go back. And they also informed the remaining loyal Bone Jackals. And they sent force back to the planet to kill the heretics. And their hatred and all of the violence on the planet drew the gaze of Korn, who dispatched his world eaters. And then when those world eaters arrived at the same time as the remaining loyalist space marines and the um, sisters of battle, big fucking battle happens. Halfway through the battles, Korn gets a fucking hard on for all of the blood. So he launches a full scale demonic incursion and all of the bloodthirsters and all of the demonettes, uh, not demonettes, the fucking bloodletters, everything just fucking bombs down onto the planet. And then in a last ditch effort to save the planet, the Imperium dispatched the Grey Knights. So it's gonna be a fucking hectic battle report. We've got a Reva Battle Titans gonna be involved. We've got three Brass Scorpions that are gonna be involved. Uh, we've got eight bloodthirsters. Four in this case, four in that case, so eight Bloodthirsters, uh, Angrath the Unbound. It's going to be fucking pandemonium. It's going to be an epic battle. And I really look forward to uh, sharing it with you guys. Uh, chuck a comment below because there's a few things that I still need to work out how we're going to do it. So I want to hear your feedback and I want to know what you guys think so that we can make sure that this epic battle is the best possible battle that it can be. And... Um, so a few of those things are, should we do a mission with objectives or should we just do straight killing? I feel like Apocalypse games lend themselves to just killing each other probably a little bit more than having a mission with objectives and that sort of thing. Um, but I'm open to ideas. Maybe each player can set their own objective, like my objective is to get Khan into as many combats as possible or something like that. Uh, let me know what you think. The other one is how do we manage the rule set. Are we going to do any changes or are we just going to play straight 9th edition rules? Uh, things like detachments, multiple psychic powers, the rule of three, those sorts of things. I've pretty much decided the rule of three can fuck off. 
even though I don't think either of us have more than three of the same unit, simply because this is gonna be essentially a collection of multiple, um, like 2000 point battle forged armies. So I don't think we're gonna double up on much, but we might, and if we do, who gives a shit? It's apocalypse. But things like command points, you know, instead of going, well, do both players just start with 12 and regenerate one per CP? Because when you're using that much Warhammer at once, you're probably gonna run out of CP in the first turn and then regening one per turn is probably not enough. So I'm thinking perhaps we'll just do something like, you know, relics and warlord traits and pregame strats are all free. And then you get like five to 10 CP to use per battle round. And if you don't use them all, you don't get more, you know, you just each, each battle round you start with 10 and that way you can continually fund the scale of your army without going too nuts, without being able to spend 40 CP in one turn on just everything and going fucking, you know, too, too nuts. So that's my current idea. Uh, and then the other thing is, do we want to just deploy the entire army on one side and then the other army on the other and then just throw them at each other and see what happens? Or do we want to do something more like uh, attack in waves? So my current idea would be something like having the heretic bone jackals deployed on the table and the loyalist bone jackals, because the loyalist is probably about twice the size in minis, you go, okay, heretics get first turn, they attack the loyalists, then the loyalists attack back and probably kill all the heretics. But then in the next turn, the world eaters arrive, the chaos space marines, so they attack. Then in these guys' turn, the sisters of battle arrive and they attack. And then in their turn, the chaos demons arrive and they attack. And then in this turn, the Grey Knights arrive and they attack. So that way it's sort of like, it's, it's kind of an apocalypse game, but it's not everything on the table at once. It sort of cycles through. And like, if there's any of the Loyalist Bone Jackals left after the World Eaters arrive, well, that's cool. And now they're backed up by sisters. So it'd be like sort of everything has to start sort of somewhat in strategic reserves. And then they get deployed in sequence to tell the narrative. Because it kind of makes sense that, you know, telling the, the, the way that story folds out would be represented on the table then. Because it's bone jackals on bone jackals fighting over this, this civil war, this corruption. And then that draws the gaze of corn. And then that draws the gaze of the sisters. And then that draws the gaze of the demons. And then that draws the gaze of the gray knights. So it sort of tells the story on the tabletop. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know what your thoughts are though, because I'm definitely interested. Uh, and also let me know if you think it's worth uh, involving my non-corn models, because I've got like Zangors, Horrors, fucking Plague Bearers, Keepers of Secrets, etc. I was thinking of just going, you know what, these, these Marines are all going to be Mark of Corn, but Bone Jackals. So for the narrative purposes, it's like this was a, a planet that was worshipping corn. Maybe more leaning on the skulls side of worship over the, uh, the blood. Uh, and that explains why there's all the cultists, you know, because they were collecting skulls of each other and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so that's what we've got going on. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. I thought you guys might find it interesting. So definitely keep your eyes peeled on the Facebook page. There'll be more updates as we potter along and prepare things. And then uh, we'll be hoping to get filming soon. And once everything is filmed, we'll probably release a series of videos. So this is, I guess this is the next part that I think would be good feedback from you guys if you have any ideas on this. But what I was currently thinking is having, because battle reports can be filmed in all kinds of different styles. This is probably gonna be a fucking 12 hour game. So filming the entire thing from start to finish just isn't really an option. And I don't even think if it was, it would be interesting. Like nobody wants to sit there and watch a 12 hour stream where a lot of the time we're just gonna be talking shit. So I think what we'll probably do is we'll do one video that'll go through the narrative. One video, which will be me doing a breakdown of the chaos army one video that'll be my mate Stewie doing a breakdown of the Loyalists. So that's three videos. And then a fourth video that'll be like a supercut 
uh, battle reports. So we'll do like film important dice rolls, film important actions, and then just sort of do a breakdown of turns. So like in that first turn, you know, the heretic guys moved forward and this happened and that happened and they punched and then they fucked and then all this shit happened. And then we'll pause it, we'll play the next turn and as things happen, we'll film them. And then we'll do a recap of that turn. And in, re you know, in retaliation, the loyalists did this and killed all these cunts and whatever and spilled all this blood and then we'll pause it. And then we'll bring in all these world eaters and we'll be like, now this happened, you know? So it'll be a summary, turn summary style with the added um, bit of just ro recording any important events. So like the event when the Falchion super heavy tank shoots at the Titan, you know, we'll, we'll record that. We'll record when Khan gets into combat. We'll record when Drago gets into combat with Angrath, you know. We'll record all the, like, the real key components, and then we'll do it a summary style. I think that's the best method. Um, the other option, and this is something that I'm actually seriously considering, is bringing the laptop in here, setting it up with a camera, and just live streaming the literally the entire thing. Um, so that at any point, if you want to jump in, see how it's going, see what where we're up to, you'll be able to do that. There'll be just a static camera, probably, you know, something along the lines of like a camera that's looking down on the table like that, but landscape, obviously. Uh, yeah, so that's my current thoughts. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to see. And uh, thanks for tuning in. All right, talk to you soon. See ya.